Hello. So you just completed your first fit for this lab using the linest function in Google Sheets. But what did that function actually do? That's what we're going to explore in this section. Linest does what's known as an ordinary least squares regression, or abbreviated OLS, because that gets kind of long to talk about. So what is an OLS? Well, it's a method you might have used in a previous course, like in a biology lab, or if you've taken statistics, you've probably seen a basic least squares regression. And the goal of the ordinary least squares regression is to minimize what's called the sum of the residuals. So what the heck does that mean? It means for each x value, xi, xi represents your various data points, you look at the value of your data, yi, and then subtract it from the value of your line. So you have a fit line and you subtract the fit for that y minus the y of your data. Uh, you square it, that way negative values and positive values don't cancel out, you want the, the, these things to add up always. Uh, and then you add them all up. That's the sum of the residuals. And we put a square to remind us that we've squared everything. And then minimize that quantity. So mathematically, it looks like this. It's kind of an ugly formula, but hopefully you can see how it kind of fits with what we've been talking about. Uh, you take each y for all your data points. You subtract the predicted value uh, that your fit would give you. You square it to get all positive numbers, add all those up, and that's the sum of what's called the residuals. And again, we put this square here to remind us that there's a square in here, and then we minimize that thing. And that is what we're trying to do in a ordinary least squares regression. We're gonna go through uh, how to do this process with some dummy data, and here's some dummy data. Uh, there's a link to this as a Google Sheet provided uh, in the section below. And this is the dummy data that we'll use throughout the rest of this series of videos and, and sections for this lab. Okay, so it's just some dummy data that I made up, not about anything in particular. Okay, so we've got six different data points here, one through six, and for each one we've got an X and a Y. So now let's go through this ordinary least squares process, you know, sort of by hand and see what it's doing. So here I have used a FET simulation, and you can see I've put the six data points from my made-up data here on the, on the grid, all right? So these are my XI and my YI. So what we do next is we guess a line. You actually have already done this somewhere in this lab. You, let, let's guess a line to get started. So let's see, uh, I'm gonna take a line and, and, and guess some slopes here. That looks pretty good, especially if I then go and increase the, the intercept. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it's getting close. Maybe a little bit more down. That's pretty good. All right. So now I have for each X, I have a predicted value of Y. All right. So um, if my fit were 0.69 X plus 2.58, a little different than what I've got here, but pretty close. So let's say I guess this line, then the first value for y, I would take x of 3.102, multiply it by 0.69, add 2.58, and that gives me 4.720. So that's the predicted value of y for this value of x, okay? And then I can repeat that process for all the different x's. So I'm using my predicted value given by this line that I sort of guessed by hand, all right? The next step in a least squares regression is calculating the difference between the prediction and the value of your data. So this is that y minus y hat. So for the first one, my y is uh, 5.2 here, 
the regression gives me 4.720. You can see it's a little bit lower than the actual Y value. And when I subtract those, I get 0 0.491. This tells me that the Y of my data is actually a little bit bigger than the prediction that uh, this line would give me. And then again, I can repeat that process for all six of my data points. And you'll notice that some are positive, like the first three here, and some of them are negative. So this fourth point has a negative difference, which makes sense in our graph because the fourth point, uh, the point is below the line. All right. So for our fit, we don't want cancellations between uh, points that are above and points that are below. We want all these residuals to add up which means we need them all to be positive. And the easiest way to make something positive nice and smoothly mathematically is to square it. So let's take these values and square it. Uh, 0.491 squared is 0.241. And then I can repeat that process uh, all the way down with all the data points and add them all up. And that's the sum of the residuals. So for this line, the sum of the residuals squared is 10.759. That's the uh, line that I'm looking at. We can actually see it on this graph. If I click this little switch, we can see the residuals for each point. So this is what we mean when we say y minus yi. We mean this little distance from the point to the guessed line. Okay, so that's my guess. Um, this is the quantity that when we try to do the fit, we try to measure, minimize, and let's see how we do with the best fit line. Uh, when we try to minimize that, you see we get a slightly different prediction than what I guessed, a slope that's a little bit smaller and an intercept that's quite a bit bigger, but that would be the uh, best fit line, okay? That minimizes this quantity, okay? So that's what the least squares regression is doing, is it's going through calculating the difference between the data value and the prediction, squaring it, adding them all up, and then trying to minimize that number. Okay. <clears throat> so there's one important feature of ordinary least squares that we will use throughout the rest of this lab. It's a maybe a little subtle mathematical point, but it turns out we'll use it quite a lot. Uh, the ordinary least squares fit will always go through the point that includes the average x and the average y value. So we indicate this mathematically as the point x bar, y bar. This is implicit in the mathematical construction of how the least squares line is, is, is developed and how it's minimized. You'll always go through this point. That's the average x and the average y. And that probably should make some sort of intuitive sense, right? Your best fit line should certainly include the average of all of your data, right? And like I said, this is a feature that we will use throughout this lab. And so it's an important feature to keep in mind. Now let's think a little bit about the problems with just basic uh, least squares fitting. Uh, this method that you might have seen before in you know, biology lab or statistics class Turns out that there's actually some significant problems with it. You'll notice that in our calculation of the best fit for using least squares, we didn't use the error bars in any way. If you go back to our uh, graph here, you'll notice these points don't have error bars on them at all. There's no information of the uncertainty on these data anywhere in this calculation, which is obviously kind of a problem, all right? So, and neither the X uncertainty nor the Y uncertainty is being included. Our data, of course, includes uncertainties, as does most scientific data. We should incorporate those results. The rest of this lab is thinking about, okay, how do we do that? How can we possibly incorporate the uncertainties that we explored in the first lab into our least squares fitting. This concludes this video.